people in this video let us look at portal hypertension okay so basically uh, what is portal hypertension so some blood pressure is more somewhere where in the portal vein where is the portal vein here is the portal vein portal vein is taking blood into the liver from where from the intestine right from the intestine the blood is going into the liver now what will the liver do it will detoxify anything that is bad if it has come here like from the intestine intestine has absorbed a lot of things right now if something bad has come here this will be detoxified by the liver so whatever intestine is absorbing liver is checking liver is checking whether it can be circulated into our body or not once it looks like it is fine then via the hepatic vein it will go to the uh, heart right into the inferior vena cava and to the heart and the heart will supply it to the entire body so liver is doing what detoxification portal hypertension now how do you exactly measure this right basically they wedge the uh, hepatic vein right or uh, they can uh, do some transhepatic percutaneous uh, transhepatic pressure they will measure okay in the main portal vein they can measure or they can measure in the hepatic vein that's what we are seeing okay did you see where the hepatic vein is hepatic vein drains the liver so this is the hepatic vein right so this is the portal vein here one interesting that you uh, thing that you can note here is portal vein is a very special vein because normally veins right they leave the organ right but here the portal vein leaves intestine but it doesn't go and join uh, something into the heart it doesn't join the vena cava system it goes to the liver so it's a very different kind of vein right hepatic vein leaves the liver right but portal vein enters the liver it is a different kind of vein it is a supply of deoxygenated blood into the liver why because it has to be checked right the content has to be checked so portal hypertension there is a classification now basically if it is because of liver it is called as intrahepatic because of liver okay because of liver if it happens it's because of it's called as intrahepatic portal tension here what will the causes be so the causes can be cirrhosis of liver so cirrhosis can happen because of lot of things one can be alcohol right then uh, metastatic tumors because of tumors there can be uh, intrahepatic portal tension lot of uh, things that if you want the easy ones extensive fatty change so diffuse glomerular glomer sorry granulomatous disease hepatic veno occlusive disease so hepatic disease some diffuse granulomatous disease extensive fatty change of the liver cirrhosis metastatic tumor so even tumors can cause this intrahepatic tension right portal hypertension cirrhosis can happen because of alcohol and lot of other things right so this can be because of alcohol or post necrotic right necrotic post necrotic biliary and uh, in hemat uh, hemochromatosis right hemochromatosis is what increase in iron right do you know what cirrhosis itself is so basically cirrhosis is uh, diffuse liver disease characterized by effacement of normal lobular architecture so the normal architecture lobular architecture of the liver is lost so diffuse means the entire liver is involved so there will be either micronodular or macronodular cirrhosis okay now coming to metastatic tumors tumors can cause uh, this uh, portal hypertension right so this will be an intrahepatic cause remember hepatic diseases fatty change all that you understood now let us look at the other causes like prehepatic prehepatic means before the liver that means somewhere below it right so somewhere here itself something has to happen the blood is entering like this somewhere here itself there is some prehepatic cause for portal hypertension it could be portal vein thrombosis right some kind of a blockage there uh, some kind of a blood clot there thrombosis portal vein thrombosis obstruction of portal vein portal vein is getting obstructed by a thrombus or by a, a tumor that is neoplastic obstruction can be there then myo uh, my myelofibrosis myelofibrosis myelo is actually bone marrow right so myelofibrosis and uh, absence of portal vein there can be an absence of portal vein itself interesting so let us look at the post hepatic causes post hepatic means after the uh, liver some problem is there okay that means there could be a heart problem because when there is congestive heart uh, failure when the heart is not working uh, properly then there can be congestion of blood here so there can be post hepatic cause which will cause portal hypertension there can be constructive uh, pericarditis something to do with the heart again right 
So these two are because of the heart con constrictive pericarditis, congestive heart failure, then hepatic veno occlusive disease. Again, some uh, hepatic veno occlusive disease they are mentioning here, and something to do with the liver again. But here they are mentioned it as post hepatic, and here they are mentioned it as intrahepatic. Okay. So one word you are noticing here is some Budd-Chiari syndrome. This is nothing but the occlusion of hepatic vein. Okay. So hepatic vein, let us say, uh, it can be either intra or post. They have mentioned it in both. Okay, Bud Chayari syndrome, something to do with the hepatic vein occlusion. So you have understood the causes of portal hypertension based on which it is classified also. Now let us move on to the problems because of uh, portal hypertension. What can happen? So what if somebody has portal hypertension, right? What will happen? Let us see. So mainly you remember four things that can occur. Ascites can occur, varices can occur. Varices can be like uh, uh, esophageal varices, etc. Splenomegaly, the spleen can enlarge. Hepatic encephalopathy. So basically, uh, one second. So basically ascites, what, what is ascites? It is the accumulation of the excessive volume of fluid within the peritoneal cavity. So here in the peritoneal cavity, there will be accumulation of excessive amount of fluid. Okay. So basically this itself can be one of the way that they diagnose uh, portal hypertension. Okay. So basically it can be that this fluid can get have neutrophils etc. So it can suggest infection also. Okay. So there are a lot of causes for this like increased portal pressure itself a cause for this. Right. Now let us move on to varices. So varices or collateral sh channels or portosystemic shunts can be there. Okay, basically what happens because of this uh, portal vein pressure, the blood which was supposed to flow from the intestine to the liver and from via the liver it had to go to the hepatic vein, it will try to find a shortcut. It will start building some path like this. Okay, this is very dangerous because you are not having the detoxification which the liver is doing. So directly a portal systemic shunt happens here. This is a portal systemic shunt. This is a collateral anastomosis. So what do you see in such people? In such people you will see esophageal varices, you will see hemorrhoids that is in the rectum, right? Hemorrhoids, right? Caput medusae, retroperitoneal anastomosis. So look at caput medusae photo, something like this. You can see caput medusae like that uh, snake head, right? Caput medusae, you remember that? Okay, caput medusae you will see hemorrhoids means where you will see hemorrhoids means in the rectum, correct? So if this is the rectum, so here you will see lot of hemorrhoids, right? You will also see lot of esophageal varices. Here you have esophagus, here you will see lot of esophageal varices, okay? So did you understand all the points mentioned here? You understood the uh, esophageal varices, hemorrhoids, caput medusae, retroperitoneal anastomosis. So in the retroperitoneum also there will be some anastomosis. Okay, so this covers the varices. Now coming to splenomegaly. Splenomegaly means the spleen will enlarge. That's all right. Okay. Then what is the last point? Last point is hepatic encephalopathy. So basically because of the liver, some encephalopathy, some brain is, get, uh, brain, uh, uh, is uh, getting affected here. Basically, because of all this, uh, you know, all these things which are not at all getting detoxified, right? So, a lot of metabolic and organic syndromes in, of the brain will happen. There will be disturbed consciousness, neurologic signs, flapping tremors will be there. Okay, so basically what is happening? The blood is not at all getting detoxified by the liver. So, that is where some problems start. Okay, so we are done with the major sequel of portal hypertension. This completes our uh, pathology topic of portal hypertension. We meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.